So hi, I'm Yulia. I'm a second year PhD student at Max Human Lab, and I'm extremely grateful to present you this exciting story. As today we will talk about axle oils. This is the model which is not yet famous in the aging field, but this is remarkable, and I will show you today epigenetic clocks you never seen before. So what are axle oils? These are neotenic salamanders that are capable of regenerating multiple organs, but without the functional loss. However, beyond that, axle oils, they also have quite a long lifespan, which is in average 10 to 13 years old. And overall, they are constituting lifespan outliers in regard to their body size. But what do we know of aging in axolotls? As they age, they grow continuously. And we can observe some events from the morphological side as dermal layer thickening or skeletal ossification events. But what is remarkable again about these animals, they also retain their regeneration capacity with age. They do not accumulate senescent cell or they are also resistant to age-related diseases as well as retain fertility with age. And taken together, they might be a remarkable model for the aging research and that's why in Max's lab we now try to address multiple hallmarks of aging in the species and trying to find out how axolotl ages on a molecular level. But within this talk, I would like to concentrate on epigenetic alterations. As DNA methylation has been widely used as a biomarker of aging and it also enabled the creation super accurate epigenetic clocks that can predict age across many species, even closely related frogs as axolotls also amphibians. So to this end, in a flourishing collaboration with Steve Hova's team, we attempted to build a first axolotl epigenetic clock. And for that, we generated multiple methylation data sets having different tissue types as shown on the slide. We also had a great coverage across whole lifespan. As I mentioned previously, their average lifespan is approximately 10 to 13 year old, but we also have some lifespan outliers as depicted here. And surprisingly, our attempts to build an epigenetic, epi, epigenetic clock until like, the whole lifespan of this species was unsuccessful, meaning that we were challenged with the low accuracy in predicting their biological age, as well as we noticed there was a clear trend of age underestimation at certain point of this species, which was remarkable because this is the first time we have see, observed such a DNA methylation flattening trend. And this is despite the same analysis has been successfully applied to another amphibian species. Therefore, we asked, what if we can build epigenetic clock, but for the limited time frame in this species? And for that, we divided our data sets for uh, like basically two data sets until four years, which is like early life in the axolotl, and it corresponds to maturation events in this species. And late life, this is the time afterwards. And indeed, this approach was successful. So we managed to have an accurate epigenetic clock until four years in axolotls. But after four, it is not possible to build an age predictor. And this is remarkable because this clock shows us it has a clear biphasic trend where DNA methylation remodeling is captured until four, but afterwards it stabilizes. Now, having built this early life epigenetic clocks, we also asked if axolotl has some shared epigenetic traits with other species. So we attempted to have dual species clocks and we succeeded. So by combining methylation data sets for axolotl and frog, as well as axolotl human, we were able to build dual species clocks. And again, this is remarkable because we could only use samples until four years. And what it tells us that axolotls, they share epigenetic aging traits with mammalian species, like including us, also with frogs. But after four, they may exhibit divergent epigenetic repatterning. We also looked at the biology behind of these age-correlated CPGs. And excitedly, after performing the enrichment analysis, categories like developmental processes or uh, morphogenesis came out. We also noticed there was a slight enrichment at the PRC to target genes. However, what we know of mammalian species or even in frogs, at the PRC to targets, we expect to have significant gain of methylation with age. But this is nothing comparable to what we see in axolotl. And again, this is remarkable. And since I told you we face this lack of signal for the clock at the late life, 
We also wanted to look at the larger scale for the methylation in axolotl. So for that, we applied nanopore sequencing like, across the whole genome. But axolotl genome is like 10 times larger than a human one. So we took advantage of adaptive sampling technique, which allows us targeting promoter regions. And for that, we analyzed excuse me, liver sam uh, limb samples and having age points there, which were critical from our clock study. And surprisingly, if performing the whole methylation profiling across promoters, we didn't detect any compelling evidences of hyper or hypomethylation, even though in mammals, what is observed is the significant gain of methylation with age, and PRC2 targets are particularly prone to this gain. So we those focused on PRC2 targets in axolotl data sets. And again, we didn't see any significant uh, gain in methylation in PRC2 target lowly methylated genes, rather a slight enrichment in the highly methylated ones. But taken together, like either at the whole promoter area or at PRC2 target genes, what we noticed that axolotl methylum may remain stable. We also wanted to challenge our clock findings further, so we address now the promoters but to this, that correspond to the CPGs that come from the clock study. And after performing this correlation analysis, it was, was remarkable for us that the oldest species, they had the strongest correlation, meaning that their metalomes were similar. And independent analysis targeting all the differentially methylated genes in the youngest animals also revealed that the strongest correlation was observed for the oldest animals, which further supports our hypothesis that maybe Following early life, axolotls, methylome may undergo fewer methylation changes or epigenetic modification, and this is in contrast to dynamic changes that they may undergo over the development and maturation. And lastly, since we are working with this remarkable animal that can regenerate multiple organs, we also wanted to test our early life clock, but on regeneration data. And for that, we selected two tissues, which is tail and limb. And we selected different ones because they have specifically different mechanism of regeneration where tail relies on the stem cells, while in limb there are events of de-differentiation. And what was interesting for us that when analyzing tail regeneration data, even after multiple regeneration rounds, regenerating tissue was not significantly different from the non-regenerating ones. We also suspect some aging, like epigenetic aging events in the regenerating tissue, but this is in contrast to the limb, where the left limb that was amputated multiple times, like three rounds per generation, was epigenetically younger than the limb that was never touched. And these events of epigenetic rejuvenation, they might be contributed to these events of de-differentiation that orchestrate limb regeneration. So with that, I would like to summarize. So this research is indeed remarkable as what I'm presenting is that axolotls, they may exhibit divergent patterns of epigenetic aging. And what we show here that it is possible to build axolotl epigenetic clock, but only until four years. So they may have this DNA methylation repatterning re until four, but later on they may exhibit the metalome stabilization. And this could be due to acquisition of negligible senescence at the epigenetic level. And lastly, we also tested our early life clocks on regeneration data, and we found that there might be epigenetic aging at during the tail regeneration, however, rejuvenation in limb. And I'm also excited to share that we are now preparing the submission to BioArchive, hopefully next week, so please stay tuned and maybe you'll be able to read this cool story on Axolotl soon. And with that, I would like to thank, first of all, Max's lab for this remarkable opportunity to work with salamander species, as well as Steve's team for this opportunity to build axolotl epigenetic clocks, and Joseph specifically, because he is a remarkable biostatistician and he struggled a lot to come up with this model for until four years. And of course, I thank you all for your attention. I will be happy to get some questions. Very, very cool. Axolotl, it's my favorite organism. Well, beautiful work. So I have a couple of questions. Uh, so first, this four years, do you think it's aging or does it really reflect some developmental stage? And then second question, did you look 
uh, or maybe planning to look at methylation machinery in axolotl, if there are like signs of positive selection that allows it to maintain so well? So it's a beautiful question because it also drills our minds. It's before we thought how to combine these four years with what we are seeing with epigenetic clocks, because first it was, okay, maybe it's about sexual maturation, but they reach it approximately at one year old. Also, they actively grow until 1.3 to two years. So physiologically so far, it's hard to say. And we're trying to find what is the biology behind these four years. Maybe they have just this prolonged uh, developmental uh, process, and then it's recapitulated by the methylation, and later on it just stabilizes. But we are trying to dig in and also Yes, it's in the plan to look at the methylation machinery behind it, as well as maybe combining it with some other omics and try to answer what is going on. I, I have a question, interesting, very interesting talk. Uh, Thank you. Uh, your nano, um, uh, 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 nanopore sequencing would allow you to test stochastic changes. Uh, in, uh, in potentially in epigenetic aging that would not be captured by kind of regression-based uh, clocks. Have you, have you tried to do that? Um, not yet, but it sounds something interesting to address. More question. I have a question, actually. Uh, so the DNA methylation data, have you tried running it in like some of the universal, like Steve's uh, universal aging clock? Sorry, I didn't hear. Have you tried to run your DNA methylation data through Steve Horvath's universal aging clock? Was that a pan mammalian? Is it only yeah. pan? It's only yeah. pan mammalian. No, okay, okay. Yeah. Strike that question. Okay, any other yeah. question? We have one down there. So that's very, very interesting. So the only reason I can think of where this can be an artifact if it's, if it's a cohort effect, right? because cohort can be distinguished from age. So have you tried to replicate this in another population or another lab cap population? Because that could exclude this quite easily. So no, so for now we only tested it on the axolotls from our colony. However, we also implied different, so we have the inbred line for axolotls, but we also test it on a different genetic background, so we have quite a diverse data set. But it would be interesting to test them from the other colonies. Over here. Um, if there is no aging, the risk of dying should not increase with age. Do you know if in axolotl the risk of death increases after four years with age, or does it stay constant? To my knowledge, no, because, so I didn't see any like mortality studies in the axolotls, but what can I tell you from our experience with axolotls? Whenever we go to our facility and look at older ones, it's hard, first of all, to tell which are old. And second of all, we never know when they're going to die. Sometimes our caretakers, they can notice, okay, they're not eating, but then we can just find that animal. And we, up to date, we don't know why they are dying from. Thank you so much, really fantastic talk. Thank you.